Okay. Huh. Well, that should be working now. I don't think anybody got that. That's okay. <laughs> We're all working now. That's what matters. I haven't done any thing on my PC gaming setup for a while through OBS, so hadn't quite worked out the audio snafu, apparently. But now we're all good, and hopefully everything is looking okay, sounding okay now, like that you can actually hear my voice. That'd be kind of important. I'm just going to put on a little bit of music in the background. Uh, let's see if the desktop... There we go. That does indeed pick that up. Very faintly. I'm going to turn it down in my headset, though. Just so we've got a little bit of background noise. As we read the Aeneid this morning. Um, and it is the Chrono Trigger OC Remix album. So, some quality stuff here. Um, so, we've got the website up. The text is pretty small. If I finagle with it here, does it change it or not? Let's see. Does not seem to. Okay. Let's see what we can do to make that a little bit more legible for y'all. Okay, that doesn't work. Troubleshooting with Interceptor. Maybe if I focus just on the text. <laughs> window capture. Maybe if I do window capture. I'm just going to try all sorts of different things today. That didn't seem to work, did it? But look at that nice little box there. That's a lovely little box. Okay. Okay. go all the way down to 45 okay if I then edit it again I'm doing amazing guys awesome gameplay a classicist figures out a website let's try that okay that to the end of oh, okay sweet I think that's legible now very good I'm awesome totally not the best or most efficient way to do it but I did it and I'm proud all right and my husband's playing with his soundboard so I just heard a very large, loud F. And I hope that wasn't directed to me. <laughs> he assures me it was not. Very good. All right. Let's actually start some Latin, shall we? Um, yeah. 
So last time we um, did the first 33 lines of Virgil's Aeneid. Um, so we got the very exciting proem introducing us to Aeneas's plight. And then the dramatic question of can there be so great anger in heavenly bodies or souls, technically? And the answer is yes. Uh, and then we get introduced to Carthage, uh, which is Juno, aka Hera's favorite city, after Samus, obviously. <coughs> Obviously. And then we get to line 34. So I'm just going to read the Latin and translate it, pointing out fun things. Feel free to ask me any questions or if you're watching this later. I, I should not hold the book right in front of my face. Huh? Kind of defeats the purpose of the web webcam. Uh, but I am using. Um, just the, the first volume of the Virgil Lobe so that I can see it um, a little bit closer. Although that has the long marks on it, so that's super useful. Maybe I should use the text that's up there um, for reading the Latin. Probably about midway through I'll get tired of reading the Latin and just translate it and look through the text. But anyways, here we go. Vix ex conspectu siculae telluris in altum, vel well ladevant laetet spumas salis aere ruebant, cum you know aeternum servan sub pectori volnus, haec secum. We're going to stop there um, before she starts talking. Uh, so scarcely had the the men the lighty. I'll just you can't actually see me pointing at the text this way. That's another troubleshooting issue um, to think about. When I get capture display, you get my mouse, and this way you do not. That's unfortunate. Well, one thing at a time. Uh, so scarcely had the lighty, the happy people, uh, set sail uh, from the site, a conspectu, uh, of the Sicilian land, Sicily, uh, into the sea. And they were rushing through Ruebant, the waves, spumas, of the salt. <laughs> the waves of the salt. It's a salt water, you get it? Uh, with their bronze beak, Aire, uh, when Juno, uh, Sir Wands, holding a eternal wound in her chest, Aeternum Wolnus and Subpectore, these things with herself. They leave out the verb to speak a lot. Another thing Virgil does a lot, I noticed. Um, is not relevant here, so never mind. He does a lot, but not in this particular sentence. So are we good? <laughs> Think Punch is not impressed right now. <laughs> Alright. Mene in capto de sistere victim, nec posel. nec pos. Italia. Teu cor a vertere regem. Too early for serious cognition. You know what? That's that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> so here's Juno being outraged. Am I the victim here? Weak dumb. That's not actually what it means, but it's close enough. I like the sense of it. Um Am I not able? Oh no. 
that's going with the second part. Am I, the victim, supposed to stop from what I've begun? And Nor, Neck, am I able to turn away the king of the Teucrians from Italy? So that's her whole thing. She really hates Aeneas. What did Aeneas ever do to you? It's complicated. Quippe vetor fatis palas exurdere classem argivat quipsos potuit submergere ponto unias obnuxet furias aiacis oileo oilei, rather. That'd be a different case. Wasn't Pallas able to burn up the the Argive fleet and to sink them in the sea on account of the injury of one dude and the stupidity of Aeolian Ajax? She actually uses the ver or the um, the noun furias, not stupidity. But I think stupidity captures it here, because it's kind of the, it's the mindlessness that's really captured with Furtius. So, I mean, it sounds like fury, and it, I mean, they are furies as well, but it's not just anger, it's a stupid, mindless anger, because in this particular case, um, the reference to Aeolian Ajax is that he raped Cassandra at the sieging of Troy. So it's not like he was angry at her. He was just in a mindless battle rage and acted out. And so Pallas destroyed him and a lot of the Greeks because of it. Sounds about right. Alright. And so... Juno's like, what's the deal? She got to destroy them, and I can't destroy Aeneas? Seems unfair. Oh, I didn't translate the quippe we torfatis. Well, I guess I'm not allowed to by the fates. Rude. Essentially the sense of that sentence. Ipsa yovis rapi yakulate nubibus ignum. Yeah. This yekit que ratis e vertit quar quae quarta ventis. Ooh. Ilex spiran tem transfixo pectori plamas turbine cordipuit scopulo quin fixit acuto. Ast ego will stop there. I like that um, little transition. Um, back to line 41, though, I'll point out the thing that Virgil's doing a lot, at least in book one, these first hundred lines. So it says, Unius obnoxum. Um, obnoxum unius is how the order to translate on account of the injury of one guy. Et and the madness of Aeolian Ajax. Um, it's kind of a Hendiades, which means one from two. So he's using two different things with the conjunction and to actually mean the same thing. Um, so the injury of the one guy is the madness of Aeolian Ajax. He, he really didn't need to write both. But um, that's what Hendiades is. All right. Uh, so back down to 42. She herself, Ipsa, tossed out like a javelin the swift fire of Jupiter from the clouds. And she tossed up the ships, well, tossed them apart. It, it did not end well for these ships. And she turned them down uh, through the sea with the winds. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. And 
She seized that man, Aeolian Ajax, who was breathing out fire from his transfixed chest. Mmm, because she hit him with lightning. It hurt a lot. Uh, anyway, she seized him from the storm and shoved him onto a sharp rock. Mmm. Athena. Gotta love her, right? Uh, so, again, Hera's mad that she can't do the same thing to the guy she hates. Uh, but double points for Pallas here, because not only did she get to get revenge, but she got to use Jupiter's thunderbolts to do it, which is pretty impressive, because uh, he's kind of the only one who gets to use them. Uh, but Pallas is his favorite, so, you know. She gets, she gets some freebies. Alright. It's because she doesn't have a mom. Alright. 46. Ast ego! But I! So, very dramatic transition there. Oh. We're almost done with this page. Okay. But I, Kwai Diwum. Oh, nope. Quae di win ke do regina yo isque et soror et conjunks una cungente tota nos bella gero oh no bella geret quis quam numen yo you know nis adorat praetiri out suplex aris imponet honorum I'm not doing the scansion at all, right? You guys would live with it. Okay. Obviously, just as the disclaimer, I do know I'm not reading perfect Tilly Hexameter right now. It's okay. She put someone in a suplex? <laughs> exactly. Where is that supplique? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, sadly, this suplex is not the same as the other suplex. But I guess it's, I mean, it's the same linguistic root, I guess. Uh, because it actually just means a suppliant here. Uh, because it means you're bowing down, you're bending down before someone. So there's the force suplex, where you're forcing someone else to bend down before you. <laughs> With extreme prejudice. Also, good morning, Mr. Bushido. Alright, but I, Astego, I who am the queen of the gods. Oh, Inkedo. Not just who am, but I walk. I walk as the queen of the gods. I prance about regally. I hope you're having a nice morning. Yo uh, is quiet soror et conjunks, both wife and sister of Jupiter. I wage war, Belaguero, with one people, una cum gente, for so many years, Totanos. Um, so she's all offended, like, it's been ten years and I still haven't been able to kill this guy. Lame. Because this takes place ten years after the Trojan War. Et quisquam, and who in the world would adore the power of Juno after this, or place honor on her altars as a suppliant? So she's all like, if I can't even kill one dude, nobody's going to worship me, because people think I'm weak. Let me kill Aeneas, let me kill him super hard. So... That's where she's at mentally. It's not a good place. To be fair, Juno is never in a good place mentally. Because it's hard to be the goddess of marriage in a, in a world that just doesn't care about marriage very much. You know? It's just... It's just not easy. Not easy being her. Alright. 
this is working sufficiently so far. Alright, so now she's done talking. Talia flama to se cum de accorde voluntas. Oh, that one I got down real good. Nimbord in patriam loca feta furentibus austris aeolium venet. Ooh. So, Talia is really common after long speeches. Uh, especially Talia Secum. Um, but this time they actually do give a verb to go with it, voluntas. Because sometimes they'll just say Talia Secum, meaning she said these things with herself. Uh, she monologued. Thusly. Uh, but this time, we actually do have this verb, voluntas, so... Speaking such things with herself in her inflamed heart. Flamato corde. She's pretty angry. Uh, the goddess, Dea. When it went to Aeolia, the fatherland of the clouds. The place that is fertile with furious winds. Austris is used to denote all the winds here, not just the... Well, it's Australia. It must be southern, obviously. Because Australia is in the south, so Austria must be the southern wind. Let's use context clues. Alright. Then... Uh, line 52... Hic was storex aeolus antro luctantis ventos tempestates quesonoras imperio premit ac winklis et carcere frenat. So a lot of long sounds in this line because it's very dramatic. The king Aeolus, uh, what did he do? <laughs> Here, heek, here he did something. We gotta go down two lines. Um, he premit, he enclosed them. I mean, it's from where we get the word press. Um, rassled them. Oh, actually, rassle is lutantis. Uh, so he shut up the quarrelous winds uh, in a cave. And the loud storms with his power. And he reined them in, Frenot, with chains and a prison. So again, kind of a Hendiades, you only really need one of them. But, sure, they were enchained in a prison. Sounds good. Because what else do you do with winds when you're not using them? It's, it's a question you always asked. Il indignantes magno cum murmure mantis. Oh, that's a very nice line. Ah, oh, good job, Virgil. Curcum claustra femunt, celsa se dent, I ol. I. Hmm. Se. Celsa se dent, I ol. Sarke. I feel like I'm. I obviously missed something up because it's not reading properly. Skeptra tenens molit quanimos et temperat iras. Ooh. Ni faciat mariac terras caelum. Caelum que profundum. Quipe ferant rapidi se cum verdant que peraras. Ooh, very nice. Alright. So back up to 55. But they, unworthily indignantes. So they're a little bit miffed that they're enclosed in a cave. They being the winds. They froth about. Fremont. Blah, blah, blah. Around the enclosure. Kirkham Claustra. With the great murmur of a mountain. And that's the line that I really appreciated. Il indignantes magno cum murmure mantis. 
because it gets that kind of murmuring sound, lots of M's um, of the winds being enclosed. Ah, this is beautiful. Virgil's really A plus, A plus author. Would recommend um, he be one of Augustus's favorite poets and live forever. So, <laughs> granted, <laughs> wish granted. All right. And Aeolus, he sits about in his high citadel, Kelsa Arche, uh, holding his scepter. Um, one of the very frequent times, uh, scepter here, you'll have a plural noun, but it really just means it's singular because he's probably only holding one scepter, not more than one scepter. That'd be kind of weird. Um, but if he were to have Skeptrum, which is the singular of Skeptra, it would become a long vowel instead of a short vowel, well, syllable, and then it would mess up his meter. So we're just going to have him hold more than one scepter so we can read it as a short. Very clever. Very clever job, Virgil. And as an aside in Virgil and Latin poets' defenses, Latin was not meant to be written in dactylic hexameter. It is not a native meter. Uh, it's a Greek meter. It works a lot better in Greek. Uh, but Roman authors love Greek authors just like everybody else. And so they want to write dactylic hexameter because they're like, well, if I really want an epic poem, it's got to be dactylic hexameter, just like Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. So I'm just going to force Latin to work by doing lots of uncomfortable things to the language. And and that's what you have to do when you're a Latin poet. Virgil does pretty well. Um, he, he tricks things. He uses hendiades. He uses plurs instead of singulars. Um, but there are some other poets whom I will not name and I do not like very much who just like ignore it. And like, well, we'll just, we'll just pretend that this is short here pretend that this is long here. That's fine. Nobody will notice. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's not fine! Anyway. Um, try to write some Latin dictylic hexameter. You'll appreciate it. Why am I so loud today? It's because I'm talking about Latin and getting excited. It's, it's uh, my Latin life. I get really excited when I talk about Latin. One time I had a student. It, was in, it wasn't even a Latin class. It was just a history Roman history survey kind of class and I had one student was like you must have really liked graduate st school because like everybody else was as excited <laughs> as you were and I'm like you're right sir you're right I did really like graduate school uh, alright where were we so he's holding a scepter and molit que animos, well, molit quanimos, he softens their souls and tempers their anger. Because that's what you got to do. If he didn't, he faki up. Uh, what would happen? Of course, quipe, they, quite fast, rapido, rapidi, would bear off the seas and the earth and the wide heaven and um, kind of brush them through the breezes. So winds left to their own devices would destroy the entire world. Want to avoid that. All right, makes sense. Said pater, um, oh, bleh. said. Said pater omnipotens. Spelunkis abdidit atris. I did not like that line. Hoc metuens molem quet montis in superaltos imposuit regem quededit qui foide recerto et premeret laxas skiret dare usus habenas ad quem tum you know suplex his vocibus usest vocibus usest alright oh usast sorry 
from that last line. Usually when you elide the words, contract, um, you drop the first vowel. But when it's the verb to be asked in that last line, you drop the second vowel because it's just the verb to be. You don't even need that really. Psh, the verb to be is for suckers. All right, this is what antiquity teaches you. All right, line 60, but the all powerful father, Jupiter, he hid them, abdidit, in dark caves hid them, the winds, that is. They're not listed, but we can assume. Fearing this thing that I just talked about, hoc metuem, you know, the destruction of the world, and he put on top of them a mound and high mountains. Again, Hendiades, he really only needed to say one of those things. A mound and a high mountain are pretty much the same thing. And he gave to them a king, a king who would know um, how to constrain them and how to give loose reins at a command um, with a certain um, assured, I guess we should say for certain, uh, for fori de recerto, with an assured pact. Uh, so he, Jupiter, and um, Aeolus made a pact on how to control the winds. To whom, Aeolus that is, then Jupiter, Jupiter is not the word that's there, Juno, the other one, uh, as a suppliant used, used to est, these, <laughs> these voices technically, she's using the voices in her head, it just means words here, he's wokibus, but technically it does say voices. She's a ventriloquist. Do you know the ventriloquist? Using voices. Alright. So what did she say? Let me just get our page opened up for y'all. Okay. Oh, there we go. We can fit it all on one. That's nice. So she said, I ole nam que ti bi di wom pater a pater a quomi numorex. Oh, that's gross. That's a gross line, Virgil. Sometimes elisions are not my friend. Et mulcere de dit fructus et tolere vento. A much better line flows right off the tongue. Gens inimica mihi terrenum na we got aequor ilium ono ilien italiam portans victos quepanates. I have to turn there so I'm going to stop. Oh, Iolus, sup. Um, sup is not in there. I, I added that. It's a little translators freebie for indeed the father of the father and the king pater atque rex of gods and men dimum hominum uh, gave to you both to soften the waves and to rise raise up the wind tolere such a fun verb by the way tolo torere sustuli sublatum because, I mean, <laughs> in good Roman fashion, it can mean to raise up, to lift up, or to destroy. <laughs> because. Because <laughs> if you raise something up, clearly you're going to slaughter it. Uh, Romans. Alright. Line 67. Uh, a hateful race to me. Um, sails the Tyridian Sea. Um, Tyrenum um, is like Etruscan. So the Etruscans are one of the other peoples uh, that hang out in Italy. We don't know a ton about them. I don't know a ton about them. Um, but 
you know, pretty cool. Native Italian peoples. Alright. Um, and this hateful people, they are carrying uh, Troy and the conquered Penates to Italy. Lame. Very good. Hmm. In cute wim wen to submersas quab frue pupes out age di versos et dis ike corpora panto. Okay. So shake out the strength of the winds and uh, destroy the ships underwater. Or, if you don't want to do that, out, you could drive them up into different directions and toss their bodies onto the sea. Either one would be good. She's giving him options, that's nice. Sunt mihi biceptem praestanti corpore nympha. That that was not... How is Nymph two syllables? I don't like it. Oh! That, that explains that. So in the text you guys are looking at, it's Nymphi. Which is clearly what it should be, but it is not printed in my edition. See, it's just got Nymph in mine. Whoop, whoop. It's not zooming in on that because it's confused. Anyway. Nymphi makes a lot more sense. We're good. We like it. Okay. Quordum quai for ma pol care ni ma care ri ma deopea. There's too many syllables in that last name. Greek? It's a Greek name. Deiopeia. It means a lovely name, kind of. It means like wealth of the god. Wealth of god. It's beautiful. Konubio yung. Oh. No, I think that's okay. Yung gum. Stabili propiam quedicabo omnis ut. Cum meritis pro talibus annos ex igat et pulcra faciat te pro le parentem. All right. Uh, so here's the bribe. She's given him options. You can you can. Destroy them all with the ships. You can toss their bodies into the sea. There's so many ways to kill people on the ocean. Uh, here's the bribe to me. I have 14. 2 times 7. That's 14, right? I have to do math this morning. Uh, 14 really beautiful nymphs. Outstanding in body, technically. We're just going to say really beautiful nymphs. Uh, of whom the most beautiful in body is Deopea. And I'll give her to you in marriage, in a stable marriage, stabili. And I'll call her your own. And uh, so that, sorry, um, she, I guess, I don't know what the subject is, so I'm going to say it's she. Um, will lead out so many years, like we'll spend so many years, all the years in fact, omnis, all the years with you for your such, such good services. And she will make you the father of beautiful offspring. Isn't that lovely? Um, he doesn't really mention that he already has a wife and like 20 kids or something. It's cool. Uh, let's, so let's see what his response is, because, as I mentioned, it's not, oh, I'm already married, but thanks. It's cool. 
I actually don't remember what his wife's name is, though. So this might be a thing of Virgil just messing up the timeline. Virgil is such a retconner in mythology. He's just like, oh, this is totally what happened. Read my fanfic, Rome. Okay. It's cool. Alright. I will let hike contra to us o regina quid o o regina quid optes explorare labor mihi you sacapesere fas est tu mihi quod cum que hoc regni tu Gap tra yo wen tu skep tra yo wen wemque conquilias tu das epil epulis a cum bere divum nimborum que facis tempestatum que potentem. All right. So Aeolius responds to these things. Haik contra. Oh queen, oh Regina, whatever you want. It's your work to ask for it. My work, mihi, for me it's right to do what's commanded. Cool. You Soften you conchilias. That's a weird word for it. Um, let me see what. Frequentative. Oh, I forgot about that form for capacite. We don't see that very often. The fre frequentative form of the verb. You make friendly, you win, you secure. Yeah, okay. So you secure for me whatever this is of a kingdom, and the scepter, and Jupiter, and you give to me um, to rest at the tables of the gods, a feast, and you make the power, oh, you make me the potentum, you make me the, the leader of the clouds and the storms. That's all. It's very nice of him. Uh, Cause I think a lot of other people would have been like, nope, not not getting in trouble for this. This is on you, Juno. But he's being very nice to her. Okay. So what happens next? Oh, this is when it gets good. We're gonna meet Aeneas. In another ten lines. Is everybody ready? Everybody ready for Aeneas? Alright. Haik ubi dicta cavum conversa cuspide montem. You ready? Punch. Punch is ready. Don't get your expectations up too high. Have you ever read the Aeneid? Has anybody in chat ever read the Aeneid? I know of Austin's here, I know he's read it. Impulet in latus aquenti. Velud agmine facto, qua data portare unt et terra sturbine perflant. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and do the next sentence too. Uh, incube, incubuere mari to tum qua sedibus imis. Un diorus que notus que reunt creber que procellis. Africus et vastos volvunt ad litora fluctus. In sequitur clamor que virum 
Stri do credentum. All right. So, after he said these things, Haik Ubidita, uh, he pushed out, or he pushed at the empty mountain with the turned spear into his side. What? Oh, he just turned over the mountain that's on top of the winds. That's destructive. Cool, cool. I thought there was more of a process to this, but no, he just like popped off the lid. And the winds, just as a drawn battle line, Agmine Facto, um, wherever a door was given, Quadato Porta, they rushed out and they blew over the earth with a a good way for turbine. Um. Hmm? He's helping me tra- Punch is helping me translate now. It, in a whirlwind, I guess is a good way to say it. Um, they lay on top of the sea and from the innermost seats, because they had been in, you know, the mountain, the rushing out from the, this hidden away mountain. So from there, they rushed out all together, the east wind, the north wind, and the southern wind, thick with storms. And they turned over, or turned up, turned out the vast waves to the shore they pushed them pushed vast waves to the shore let's say that um, yeah so pretty crazy and guess what followed Ensequitur the clamor of men and the screeching of ropes uh, so they're in a lot of trouble they just got, you know, capsized, one and all. I think they lose... I don't remember how many ships they lose in this one. But they lose quite a bit of ships. Oh, I'm going to have to make the screen bigger. Uno momento. There we go. Okay, good. So, people are screaming now, so that's exciting. And we're at line 6, 7, 88. Eripu want subito nu bes kailum. Que kailum que diem que. Tu cror ex oculis ponto nox incubat atra. Ah, this is a cool description. They seize, like they steal the clouds. No, the clouds steal heaven and the day suddenly. Isn't that a cool description? That's a cool description. Good job, Virgil. Um, and he uses a... What's the term for it? When he uses more ands than necessary. Because uh, we have the air repuent subito nubes, kailum que diem que. So you both heaven and the day, um, they seize suddenly. Oh, and they seize them from the eyes of the Teucrians. Uh oh, they're freaking out. Night, dark night, in fact, black night, lies on the sea. Oh man. You can just imagine that storm. It's super cool. Uh, I don't think I read anymore. So, into into nuere polet cre bis migat ignibus aiter praesentem que veris intentat omnia mortem. Omnia mortem. Oh, we're getting to something good here. 
the poles, like, of the world, that is, those kinds of poles, thundered, and the air glistened mikat um, with frequent fire lightning. And all things, Omnia, threatened death. Like, right in front of the men. <laughs> Presentum. So it's like, they, they can see death. They can see their death in this storm. It's pretty intense. And now we get Aeneas. Poor Mr. Aeneas. Extemplinei war. Oh wait, extemplinei solvunt ter frigore membra in gemit. No, that's probably short, huh? In gemit et duplicis tendens ad sidere palmas. Talia woke refert. Stop before he gets to his famous, maybe infamous speech. Uh, first speech of Aeneas. So, and all out of a sudden, ex templo, the limbs of Aeneas are loosened with cold, and he groans, stretching. His both both his hands, duplicis palmas, just n not just one hand, both hands, to the stars. He says such things with his voice, loosened with cold, like he was so frightened that he lost control of his limbs, and he just went numb. That's the the image. Mr. Bushido. And the infamous speech of Aeneas. Uh, I should probably start again at the beginning. Talia vocere fert, o ter que quater que beati, quis anti. No. Quis anto rapatrum troiae sub moinibus altis contigit o petere. Oh no, that elides. How dare you. Contigit o petero danaum fortissime gentis tutti de mene menilia quis o Cumbere campis, non potuisse tua quanimam hanc. Oh, that probably elides too. Tua quanimanc e fundere dextra. Those MH elisions are rough. Sai was who be. Oh, nope. Sai was who by Aki die tell lo ya get Hector u bin gens sarpe dan u bit sarpe don u bitotsimo is corrupt. Da sub undis scuta virum galiasquat fortia corpora volvit. <gasps> okay. Aeneas. First lines in his own poem. Oh, three times and four times blessed are those to whom it happened to die in front of the faces of their fathers under the lofty walls of Troy. I wish I were dead. Ah, Aeneas. Oh, son of 
Hi Dios. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's um, Diomedes. Oh, Diomedes, most strong of Greek of the Greek men. Oh, why wasn't I able to die on the f Trojan fields and to pour out this soul of mine with your by by your left hand, right hand, not left hand. That would be weird. Um, I mean, not weird, but you don't you don't get very many left-handed people mentioned in the ancient world. Sorry to any left-handed people out there. Uh, so he wanted Diomedes to kill him in his duel. Uh, where savage ha Hector Hector Ooh. savage Hector lies. Um, Thanks to a uh, weapon of the sons of Iacus. And where great Sarpedon is dead. And where um, the Simois, Simois, the river, one of the rivers around Troy, where the river turns so many stolen shields of men and helmets, and strong bodies under its waves. Yay, Aeneas. So, that's that's where he's at. And that's where we'll stop. <laughs> poor, poor Aeneas. He's having a really rough time. And uh, that's how we're introduced to the great Roman hero, um... I wish I were dead. So obviously scholars really like to talk about that introduction. Because the first words of your hero are going to matter. Um, and tired. Tired is what Aeneas is. He tries so hard to be so pious and to save his father, and to save his son, and to save his panates, and to obey the gods. And he just, he doesn't know what he's supposed to do. And he kind of knows he's supposed to get to Italy at this point. But he's just so tired. <laughs> and now there's this giant storm. After he just buried his dad on Sicily. I think he's kind of feeling it. I think he's kind of ready to, to throw in the towel. But we'll find out more about that um, when we continue next Sunday. We're going to try and do a hundred lines a week. Um, if there's not a lot of questions, it goes by pretty quickly. So maybe I'll try to do 150 next week. Um, where do we get to... If we do 150... Oh, he gets to talk to his mom! If we get 150... That'll be worth it. Oh no, this isn't him talking to his mom yet. I don't think. I think this is his mom talking to Jupiter. His mom is Venus. Oh, okay, well that's a good speech to, to do. So yeah, we'll try to get through 253 next, next week. Um, where he lands on um, Carthage shore and his mom goes talks to Jupiter and says what is going on with my son uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll, as I mentioned I'll post this to various places so if you're watching this on YouTube later and you have a question with the Latin or the context, you can let me know. Uh, we're also going to do a little bit of book clubbing, which is my favorite type of clubbing. And um, so I'm going to be reading Mark Marivale's Meet Your Spiritual Father about St. Joseph. So if you don't know much about Joseph, it's a really cool book. Um, whether you just want it for informational or for um, devotional purposes. It's great. I'll try to 
vary the book because I know money isn't always a lot for people. I agree, Max. There needs to be like a language. Right, I search for like language. Language advisory. Oh, that's funny, Punch. I was searching for all kinds of tabs for language and literature, reading. Nothing. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and put in the language advisory one next time. That, that'll that send the right signal. I mean, a lot of crazy stuff does happen. We talked about death a lot today. Virgil doesn't curse very much, though. I'm like, we're not reading Catullus here. We should be okay. Memento Mori. Always Memento Mori. I know one streamer who does a lot of language learning. I think she uses just chatting. Yeah. And I could do that. Roswell recommends not doing that because of randos. But, I mean, just chatting is not 100% accurate either. So, we'll figure it out. Maybe, maybe I'll just send in a request to Tritch. Like, I wanted to do ancient language teaching on my channel. Suck it. I mean, add me a tag. Right? I mean, other people have to do some sort of language and literature thing. So, I think, lang yeah, there, see, now I do need a language advisor because I said it. Du yeah, Duolingo does do Latin now. I haven't been trying it because I already know Latin. <laughs> I mean, Twitch, you're great. Um, so for book club, I'll try to switch between, you know, trying to find some things that are easily available in libraries or um, public domain so you can find them online and things you might have to buy. Um, because I don't, I don't want costs to be a deterrent all the time. Uh, but anyway, so Mark Maravalli's Meet Your Spiritual Father about St. Joseph. Amazing. St. Joseph will change your life if you do not have a devotion to him. Start it now. If you're not interested to devotions to saints, it's still an interesting read uh, about Jesus's earthly father, as it were. Uh, one copy is twelve ninety five. Um, but you can get two copies for $10. So I recommend you get two copies for cheaper. And then give it to a friend, uh, a loved one, a stranger, um, your church. Um, you know, just anybody who might like one. Original printing of St. Augustine's Confessions. That doesn't exist in antiquity. <laughs> like, you can't... We, we don't really have very much original anything from antiquity. We think we might have a signature of Cleopatra. But we don't, we don't really have originals of anything. The closest we get are manuscripts. Uh, hello, friend. Have you heard about our Lord and Savior's father, St. Joseph? Exactly, Mr. Bushido. Exactly. 88 miles per hour. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, if you get me a little interview with St. Augustine, that'd be great. Um, so we'll talk about this book. I I'm going to make it. I, I didn't look at the date. Um, that, that's something I meant to do to have the date handy. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, this is the second Sunday, but it's the first Sunday after first Saturday. So that's when I'm going to aim to do it. Uh, so October 6th, we will discuss, well, I will discuss Meet Your Spiritual Father. You all are welcome to join me. It looks like maybe streaming a little bit later is better for people. Like if I aim to start more like 10 or 10.30 instead of 9.30, might get some more people. I'm really excited to get going and streaming early in the morning. But if it's only a one hour stream, 
I should probably delay slightly, it seems like. I'll put I'll put up a poll. What time should I do Sunday morning Latin stream? I don't want it to be too late because then I do Chrono Cross with Punch all day. Um, so, you know, I want a break between the two. Um, but yeah, I, I have a soft spot all day. Hey, today we've got to make up. We haven't streamed Chrono Cross in two weeks. We got a lot of side quests to do. We get Chrono Cross today. Yay! Um. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking more like noonish. I'm not sure what Punch is thinking. He's playing something right now. I think he's playing Breath of Fire. Um. I mean, we can do it in 30 minutes. I just need to eat first. Okay, Punch is still asleep. So, more like noon, yeah? Yeah, he's nodding. Okay. Um, we'll obviously update in Discord. Dinner! Um, I don't think they can hear that from here, dear. He did the soundboard for it. <laughs> he's having a cup of tea this morning. I Actually, I, I actually don't 100% know. It might have just been hot water. Because all I did was pour hot water into a cup. Uh, he may or may not have put tea into it. I can neither confirm nor deny. Um. Oh man, reading Latin is so fun. Just so, so y'all. Ew, gross. I know, I hope you're joking, but ew, gross. Um. I'll also, I'll try to switch between Greek and Latin. So if we do, I think there's about 700 lines in book one. I mean, all the books is about 700. Yeah, 750. So we have about 650 left. That's like four weeks. Um, so I'll try to alternate between different texts as well. So next time I might do Greek, I might even do some New Testament. Um, so I can do Pulse for that too. And just keep switching back and forth. Um, let me know what you would like to see, what you would like to do. Um, I just, I have fun doing some classics since I don't get to do it very much anymore. <laughs> okay, I mean, I can do it in my free time whenever I want. It's just not as much fun when you're babbling to other people. Babbling to other people is much more fun than babbling to my poor husband. Uh, <laughs> or my friends who who get far too much information about antiquity than they need. <laughs> but did you know? Uh, so this is... I mean, this is totally selfishly motivated, and I was having fun even when people weren't in chat hanging out, so I think it's going to work for me. Hopefully, it'll enjoy you. It'll enjoy you? I don't know English is a problem. I know Latin. I can just read that from Latin and not have to translate very much, but <laughs> I don't actually know English very well. So if anybody's watching this to try to do your Latin homework, <laughs> I would not actually recommend using my translations in your class. <laughs> uh, trust me, the Latin is much better than my English translation of it. But if anybody is watching the VOD, if anybody is watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave um, comments with questions about something in the Latin or explanation of all, I mean it's just it's just so beautiful it's just, the Latin is just amazing it's just, I just want to sit here and appreciate Virgil for a moment yeah it's just I, yeah and I understand I know like 
the downside to doing it Sunday morning is that my key audience is <laughs> busy doing churchy things. Um, hence finding, you know, what the right time exactly would be, like, before Mass, after Mass. You know, since we mostly go to the Vigil, I'm pretty flexible. If we're not going to the Vigil, we're going to 8 a.m. So, again, I'm back by 9, 9.30. But if I have it a little bit later, um, that that seems to work better for people. And maybe Punch will be more awake. I would like to say, speaking of odd question, Basilica, the Cathedral, or regular? Um, you choose. You know, you know what the services are like. Um, because I'm assuming the context. So I say you. You decide. Um, whatever has the best music. How about that? Best music. You decide based on that criteria. All right. Um, I do just want to point out in this beautiful speech of Aeneas where he's just like, I want to die. Um, in that line 95. Oh, yeah, organ. There we go. Quis ante orda patrum. Um, so to whom it happened to die before the faces of their fathers. Um, ante ora patrum, before the faces of your fathers, is something that recurs in the Aeneid. Um, and one of my professors from undergrad actually wrote, it might have even turned into a whole book eventually, about dying in front of <laughs> your father in the Aeneid. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Um, because the Aeneid, part of the Aeneid, is family dynamics, particularly father-son dynamics. Um, you know, Aeneas ditches his wife and brings his father and his son with him. It, it was an unintentional ditching, to be fair. But he brought his father and his son with him on this journey, but his wife dies in Troy. So it's, it's a lot more about male relationships um, than relationships with women. Even though we're about to read the whole Dido thing, which is kind of a big thing in the Aeneid. Um, but there's a lot more father-son um, dynamics. And it's all pretty depressing. Oh, the Aeneid is so good, though. We might have to read another book of the Aeneid later on. Book 8. Get us some good old book 8. Alright, well. That's for another time. I've been I've been streaming my over my hour. <laughs> so I can stop babbling now. About the Aeneid for a little while. Um, and start reading Meet Your Spiritual Father. Uh, it's short. It's only 150 pages. It doesn't take long to get through. Easy to read. Um, I'll be back Tuesday, but it'll be a late stream because I have a meeting after work. Um, so I'll just be doing a little bit of Little Dragon's Cafe on Tuesday. Friday, I don't think we've got anything going, so should be normal. Oninaki, because my computer will have finished updating by then. I hope. Uh, and I'm going to try my best to make it a long stream, since I did miss a week of Oninaki, and I really want to get into that game. It's only supposed to be like 30 hours. 30-ish. Um, so I figure if I can do a couple long Fridays, I can really uh, get through that game. Um, but, of course, later today is Chrono Cross. 30 hours stream. <laughs> I did not say that, Mr. Ruscino. You take that back. Um, but I'll see you guys in about an hour. Hour and a half. 
let's say somewhere between one to two hours for Chrono Cross. Um, I will caffeine up and food up and be ready to go for the long haul. Uh, tell me some sort of crochet project I should work on while I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a lovely Sunday. Hope to see you guys later. Bye.